you're going to like this. I've got a challenge for you to create this. I was reached out to by a teacher on LinkedIn with this challenge. She had a lesson log and a student log, as you see here. They run two different sheets. I've brought them together and I've simplified them just so we can look at the key columns and values that we're going to be using in these formulas. But basically what happens is this. We've got a lesson log where we select a student and a lesson plan, both of which these drop down lists are pulling from the column right here for lessons and the row right here for students to populate these data validation drop down lists. And when I select a student and a lesson plan, then over here, that was David lesson three, we want this box to check. So I'm gonna select David lesson one right here. And you can see right over here, this box now checks. Pretty cool, right? Takes a little bit of doing though. All right, so how do we set everything up? Well, the first thing that we're gonna do is create tables. And you can do this in Excel because you've been able to do that for years in Excel but you can now do it as you see in Google Sheets. And this is very helpful with our formulas. So let's just say we have, uh, I'm gonna put it over here just for demo purposes. Let's say we have the data right here. It's just raw data in our Google Sheet. All you have to do to make a table is select the range, highlight it and say convert to table. Alternatively, you can go up here to format and the option is right here and also you don't even have to select the whole thing. It will usually be smart enough to select the range that's got the data in it for you. And it'll create this nice table. Now this is useful because, as you see here in just a minute when we get into the formulas, we're gonna be using named ranges, or in our case, table ranges, and they're gonna be dynamic. So look, I've got this drop down list of names, Eamon, David, Sarah, Julie, and Matt, because it's got all these people in it. Well, if I add, uh, I don't know, uh, I already used Dave. What's another name? Are there any other names? Yes, Robert. So if I add a Robert over here, look, Robert's populating. Uh, same thing for the lesson plan. I've got lessons one through seven. Well, if I come down here, if I add lesson eight, everything just works. Now, the only thing that I have to do if I add Robert or something else over on the far right of the table is I do have to actually um, drag over the checkboxes for that to work. And we'll see right here that once I do Robert lesson six, it does work. But each of these new rows automatically gets included in our table, which lets us use the table ranges. And let's stop talking about them and show you what they mean. The table ranges are, Students is the name of this table. And if you do a bracket, then all of the columns have their own range. So if I go to David, then that is David's column right there. And what happened? Well, in order to actually get the values, I'm going to need to do curly braces and then it'll return all those values in David's column. You can see true, false, 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 false. So the only thing that's checked is lesson one for David. Those are accurate. So this is going to let us do a few things. First of all, to set up our validation, let's go to the edit button here. And if you were setting this up from scratch, you would go to data, data validation. You can apply to the column. So you don't even have to select a range. You just do this automatically applies to column, column lesson student, drop down from a range. And I've got actually the only named range in this list is this right here, student names, which goes from F3 all the way to N3, because there's no table named range shortcut for a row like this, it's all columns. So this is the only one we had to do manually, but once it's in here, then it's in there and this will automatically populate with any new person like Robert that I add. And if I wanna insert a column to the left, check that out, it will actually put the uh, proper checkboxes in there. Uh, who else can I put in here? Let's put Angela right there. And now we've got Angela in our list. Lesson two, something's not working there. Mm. So it does put the checkboxes, but look, it doesn't put the formulas with it. So we will have to manually drag that over. And now Angela, lesson two, does check off. 
I did the same thing with the lesson plans, the validation for this, you can use student lesson as the range, because what we're doing is grabbing the student lesson column, and that's a special table range. So it'll just populate with new lessons every time I enter new lessons. Now we've got lesson nine also in there. Enough of that. How do we make these checkboxes check? Well, it's a big long formula, there it is. But it's not as complicated as it might appear. We're using if, count if, and array formula. That's it. It's just long because we're grabbing these long table named ranges. We're doing some concatenation right in here. We're testing if it's greater than zero for this count if statement. And then we're returning true or false based on the condition of our if statement. Clear as mud? Okay, let's dive into this. All right, so how do we get this nasty formula to work? How do we make heads or tails of this? Well, I got some stuff down here. Let's bring it up here so we can look at it all together. Let's collapse that so now we can kind of see everything. I'm gonna get my head out of the way just in case I get in the way too. So let's talk about the formulas we're using. We've got array formula first. I'm gonna talk about this just to wrap your head around what it's doing. Array formula is taking the lessons or the students in the lesson log, and it's just concatenating them with the lesson plan in the lesson log. So it's literally the same as if you said, Amen and lesson three. That's all we're doing down here. You do it in one fell swoop though, and it gives you all the values of the combinations of all these students and lesson plans. So that's the array formula part of this nonsense, this first part of the count if formula. The second part, this F3 and E4, that's, that's doing this. It's just grabbing the name of the student in the student log and concatenating it with the lesson over here in the lesson column. So we lock in place row three for the name so that when we drag it down, Amen remains constant. And then we lock in place the column E for the lesson one through nine in the lessons column so that when we drag it over to the right, all of these other columns will simply grab David lesson two, David lesson three, Sarah lesson one, two, three, so forth and so on. Because what we are ultimately doing is testing each of these cells, whether or not Amen lesson one is inside of this array that we created with array formula. So is Amen lesson one, this cell right here, is that anywhere over here, any combination of student plus lesson plan from our lesson log? Well, no, it's not. So the value count if is zero. We only count it if it's in this list. So if I change lesson one, uh, three to lesson one, you'll see that right here, hey, count if Amen lesson one is in this array formula list, and it is. Kind of confusing, but pause it if you need to review this for yourself. Check the link in the description to grab this workbook and look at it on your own. That's all that this whole thing is doing, this count if all the way through this comma before the true word. Let me open this up so you can see it color coded. Count if array formula lesson student lesson lesson plan is equal to the concatenation of the name in the student log plus the lesson in the lesson column, if that's greater than zero, then true, otherwise false, because we wrap that, that whole thing is wrapped in an if statement. So if that's true, if this is equal to one, that means aim in lesson one was in this list, therefore I need to return true, which would check this box. And that's all we're doing here. If it's false, or if it's uh, not greater than zero, then we return false. That's how we get this multiple criteria for a dynamic selection, which I thought was pretty awesome. Now, again, if you add dates down here, let's just do that, then it automatically extends the table. I'm automatically going to be able to select another person and another lesson, and there we go. Hope that's helpful for you. If it was, please click like and subscribe to the channel. 
If you'd like to see another cool video, I made this one a while back about multiple data validation selections where you can select more than one item in a data validation. So instead of just selecting Eamon, I could select Eamon, David. You can't do that out of the gate with Google Sheet, but I modified an app script that I found and made it possible. Hope you have a great one and goodbye.